Hello! This video is brought to you by my patrons. Minasan, hontuni arigatou gozaimasu. My name is Kurt, and this is my daily good life meditation. An exercise that I do every morning, a little bit after waking up, is now 4.44 a.m. I do this to remember my life objectives and principles, those which are outlined in my book, Going Alone. And you can get a copy at the link above. And if you don't see a link, there's one down in the description. I also use this time to think about the last 24 hours and uh, how I did with the various challenges and opportunities that I met. I reflect on the coming day and ready myself for the challenges that I can foresee and very importantly prepare myself for the unexpected. I then conclude with uh, preparation for death. But before I do any of that, I like to read a poem. Today uh, we're going to read from John Keats a rather challenging poem called Character of Charles Brown. Yes, Charlie Brown. Um, this one's tough. It's the majority. I mean, look at all the uh, pink. Those are all vocabulary that were new to me that I had to look up as I prepared for today. Um, let's go over the vocabulary and then I'll um, read the poem and we'll see if this comes out and makes any sense. It's a tricky one. Uh, there's a word wheat, which means to know, W-E-E-T. Carl is a, a man of low birth, C-A-R-L-E. Parley, P-A-R-L-E, is a conference, sometimes a, uh, like a war conference. A zephyr is a mild breeze. Here's a, just, I just want to point out, here's, a, here's one sentence that I really like, or a sentence fragment. No one had touched his cheek with, no care had touched his cheek with mortal doom. Mm -hmm. I like the language there. There's something called a wassail and a wassail bowl. Wassail apparently is a type of alcohol drink, um, and a wassail bowl was a, that you drink it out of, and it was a, comes from an old English ceremony to, um, like a <clears throat> harvest ceremony, drinking out of the wassail bowl. I'm pro probably not pronouncing it right. Ribalds is um, a cure, obscure or crude and crude speech. Laymans um, are lovers. The scorner's chair is like, we would say something in a modern sense, we would say like a, um, a armchair quarterback. <laughs> a scorner's chair is like, you know, someone who's, you know, hurling criticism from their chair. Tipping the wink. I wrote, I, I wrote it down, but then I don't see where I wrote down the meaning. I don't remember what the meaning was. T the slang of cities is no why. In no wise he knew, no, why, no way he knew. Tipping the wink to him was heathen Greek. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Tipping the wink would be like winking, right? It's, it's like a conspiracy, like, a, like an inside thing. It's like, okay, you know, no, okay, we're going to do that thing. He, and this guy, he, the person he's talking about is so... He's oblivious. He doesn't get it. Well, what? Got something in your eye? Tipping the wink. Ruin. Okay. And then he talks about various types of alcoholic alcohol drinks. Um, Old and Tom, I guess, is a type of beverage. Ruin Blue is an interesting type of beverage. I've never heard it called Ruin Blue. It's, I've heard it as Blue Ruin, which is gin, which in the, I think it was in the 18th, 19th century period. Um, there was really no regulations on gin, and it was made in a horrible way, practically poison, very cheap form of uh, alcohol, alcoholic beverage that you could get in, in, in gin, gin parlors in England. Um, and it was so full of poisons that it would, uh, to make you drunk, that if you drank enough of it, you would literally, tr literally turn blue, and it would kill you. I think they also called it Mother's Ruin or something like that, Blue Ruin, Ruin Blue in this case. Nance is a <clears throat> word for brandy. Meek is a type of, I think it's like a, like a meaty beer or something like that. Um, per, per, perlius, P-U-R-L-I-E-U-S, is an outlying area. It comes from back in the old days when the king's forest surrounding his cash, the king's property, and it now refers to kind of an outline, outlying area. And then a term here, curled Jewesses, which I couldn't quite look up. It may mean just, you know, Jewish women with curly hair. 
Unless it probably unless it has some other archaic meaning. That's a lot of new vocabulary. Let's give this a try. I haven't this is my first time to try to read this one through without stopping to figure things out. Character of Charles Brown. He is to wet a melancholy carl, thin in the waist, with bushy head of hair, as hath the seeded thistle when in par. It holds the zephyr, ere it sendeth fair, its light balloons into the summer air. Thereto his beard had not begun to bloom, no brush had touched his chin or razor sheer, no care had touched his cheek with mortal doom, but knew he was bright as but knew he was bright and knew but knew he was and bright as scarf from Persian loom. I couldn't get that right. <laughs> ne cared he for wine or half and half, ne cared he for fish or flesh or fowl, and sauces held he worthless as the chafe. He disdained the swineherd and the vassal bowl. Nay, with lewd ribald sat he cheek by jowl. Nay, with sly layman's in the scorner's chair. But after water brooks this, but, but after water brooks this pilgrim's soul panted, and all his food was woodland air, though he would oft times feast on gillyflowers rare. The slang of cities in no wise he knew. Tipping the wing to him was heathen Greek. He tipped no olden tom or ruin blue, or nance or cherry branded drink full meek. By many a damsel, horse and rouge of cheek, nor did he know each aged watchman's beat. Not in obscured pearless would he seek, for curl the Jewesses with ankles neat who, as they walked abroad, make tinkling with their feet. Lovely. I don't get it. I mean, I don't think I get anything. Something about a guy, you know, melancholy guy of low birth with um, a young man. His beard hadn't quite come in, and he doesn't care for food or drink, and... Uh, he doesn't under he's stupid, he doesn't understand anything. Um, stupid is a strong word, but he says <laughs> he doesn't understand you're winking at him. You get it, get it. No, I don't get it, right? He doesn't care about uh, blue ruin about what lovers have to say. He's not interested in uh, he didn't know anything about what the old watchman does. And uh, nor and he doesn't even care about women. That's what that part is. And nor in obscured pearlies would he seek for curl the Jewesses with ankles neat. <laughs> so I guess he's a man, a young, young, ignorant, teetotaler man that doesn't give a damn about anything. I think that's that. Maybe I'll read that one again tomorrow just to have another pass at it. I like that now that I studied it a little bit. That was fun. Let's do the good life. First, last night, and yesterday. Um, yesterday was my Friday on. Uh, I get every other Friday off. Status report day. It's my first status report for my big project. Um, it took the whole friggin' day to prepare for that status report. I had a meeting with the vendor project managers in the morning, which was really good because they we aligned on the messaging and I, we were able to put together then the, the status report recipients list, um, went over the, the 10 items of risk, went over the 27 items of scope, perfect alignment between the three, three of us. Um, that's good. When the PMs on both sides agree to everything, we're in good shape. Then it's a matter of just, uh, constraining the team to the, to the goal at hand, right? So that's good. Hopefully that sets a good precedent. And every, by every two weeks, I'll have a nice status report like that. The sponsor will, and I CC'd the entire team, all, all stakeholders involved, including the vendor stakeholders as well. I was kind of surprised that they offered that. I would have thought that they would want the status to come from them. Hey, why is that, why is that customer sending out your status report? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a good day. Oh my gosh, I had a nice swim yesterday. 
the beach. I went out and I swam into deep water. Waves were breaking deep out beyond a kind of a, there was kind of like a reef of sand. I swam out to the deep water and it was nice. And as the air show finished here, the day of practice, and I was out there body surfing as the Thunderbirds soared overhead, you know, doing their thing. And the water was just so delicious. It's cold to get into, but after a minute and a half, you kind of numb up and then you could spend you know, about 20 minutes maybe before you start to get cold. It's not wintry yet. It's just, yesterday was a day to remember. Hmm. It's a good day. Two good walks with my wife. I love spending time with her. Um, now that we're past the, uh, getting past the, the rough and tumble season of life, right? The raising of a child, the forging of careers, the managing of the incessant issues of life. Our home now is a place of peace and tidiness, simplicity. And yeah, you're like, well, Kurt, what do you mean? When Emily was around, it wasn't a place of peace? No, it wasn't. It was small kids. <laughs> small kids are, 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 riotous, are riotous beings, right? There's always something going on. And, and that's the way that that season should be, right? I mean, the season of, the season of parenthood is a season of, of, uh, of managed chaos. And now it's interesting. I see her life, that, that chaos. Uh, yeah, how do I say that just right? And if she sees this, I hope you get the right way, uh, get right, the right understanding from that, Emily. Um, it's the way of young, it's the way of a, a life. You know, you grow up, you become an adult, you enter the world, and you begin taking on the baggage and the challenges of up-ramping into adulthood and taking on all those responsibilities. And it's chaotic. It doesn't mean that your character is necessarily chaotic, although for a lot of people that is the case. I would be one of them, less so now. But that's the way it's supposed to. That's the way I would say it's supposed to be. That's the way it is. It's the, it's the way it is. It's, it's the life preparing young adults for the riotous experience of two and a half decades of child raising and dealing with school and careers and budgets and mortgages and bills and oh, all that stuff. And we're beyond that now. What's coming next is, is, is ruin, right? As the body begins to decline and we have a, maybe, maybe a, a few, few years or if we're lucky, a decade or so of peace. So don't, don't envy us. Your turn may come. May, there's no guarantee. It's a season. Let's do the Good Life Creed. There are eight objectives as follows. To be always ready to die. To make good and effective use of my time to develop and maintain good and sound life principles, to cultivate good emotional reactions, to perform good actions, to recognize my true limits and my true opportunity, and to do just one thing at a time and do that thing slowly and deliberately and carefully. And lastly, to keep my balance in life. The principles, and these objectives and principles are outlined in detail in my book, Going Alone. 35 principles are war, reason, homunculus, anchor hold, home of good and evil, purpose, atomic principle, principle of nature, the pirate ride, maturity, social principle, principle of family, public speaking, temperance, Life will not go well. The horror show. That which must be born. The feast of Ophel. Distraction. Agency and the great indifference. The best seat in the house. The restless man. 
the path of wildness, the great life adventure, the risk of avoiding risk, sin and damnation, complete oblivion, the season of philosophy, script writing, the bull's eye aim, the uphill climb, arena and utility, nothing is enough, the principle of fun and being ready. That might just be the clearest path I've ever done to all 35. They came out smooth that time. I'm pretty sure I got them all in their proper order, no less. Okay, as for today, it's a Saturday. I'm doing this. I'll do my reading, my writing. I'll then feed the dogs, feed myself. I'll catch up on all my morning things I have to do on the computer. Then I will um, go to the beach, do my book reading, come back here, uh, clean the house. Yumiko and I will go have lunch. Then we'll do our shopping. I need to buy a pair of jeans. Do I really want to buy a pair of jeans? I need to buy a pair of jeans. You know what? I've got that one pair of pants I can wear. Yeah, I'll just do that. I don't want to buy a pair of jeans. I don't want to, I don't want to be a person who owns jeans. Nothing against jeans. It's just that... Okay, something against jeans. <laughs> it's my own personal... My own personal bias against jeans that I didn't realize I had until now it comes from the time of life when I wore jeans and I, I have my, my um, mind isn't fond of that period of life. I'm going to do something on Monday that will require me to wear jeans. I'm going to be out doing a, with, you know, a ride-along for my new project, which is uh, inspection, inspecting hazardous material sites. So I... Uh, in Riverside County, so I need jeans for that. Mm, what else? I'm excited about that, by the way. Oh, am I ready for death? Are my affairs in order? Yes. Is my life's work complete? My daughter's raised, nearly, and my book is done, yeah. And are my relationships sound? They are. Yeah. I hope I can continue to live another day and then maybe a little longer than that. But if today's the day, then that's fine. I will die without looking back. Go into oblivion. I'll stop there. I wish you all the best. Be safe, but not too safe. Take care.